I'm John Rafrano for Boris TV and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at type on text. You'll notice I created a little type on text here uh, where the text is dropping down as it spins and then spinning away at the end over these, uh, this cloud background. Very, very, very easy to uh, create. So let me show you how this is done. We're going to create a new project. I'm going to insert a video track and then I'm going to insert uh, an empty event. Uh, and then I'll go over to my plugin manager and I'll take type on text and drop that onto my event. We'll launch the text window and we'll give it some text to play with. And I'm going to go down to transformations and the first thing I want to do is just scale this back a little so you can see it. So I'm going to take the master scale, hold my control key, uh, and then just bring it down just a little bit. That should do it. And let me put some uh, color in this. I'm going to go to the front material. Uh, we're going to put the uh, blue plastic as we saw in the beginning. Now, uh, type on text looks exactly like text. Uh, the text plugin from BCC7. You've got the render parameters, extrusion, lights, uh, front material, side materials, transforms. Everything is the same except these two new sections type on reveal and type off remove. And they are identical. Uh, so we're going to take a look at the first one. In order to enable them, you uh, click the checkbox that says do reveal effect, and that will enable the type on reveal. And then let's open this up and see what we have. Now, if I play this, nothing is going to happen at first because I haven't turned on uh, any of the effects. Uh, so let's uh, do one that's kind of obvious here, and we'll use the fade. I'm going to set the fade down to zero, and then play, and you'll notice that one at a time, the text fades onto the screen. So that's the first thing you could do. You can add a fade to this uh, text. One of the other things you can do is, uh, is master scale. And by the way, I'm just double clicking to reset these parameters uh, to their original values. I'm going to take the master scale. Again, I'll scale that all the way back or maybe, maybe we'll just see, we can see it on the screen. Uh, and then you can see them scaling up. Now, this is a good time to show you what the reveal time and the overlap do. Uh, so the reveal time is how long it takes for these to actually be revealed. Uh, we can make these shorter. I'll, I'll make this very short, and you'll see that this will happen more rapidly. Right? They're just kind of slamming onto the screen really quick. Or I can make it longer, and they will take longer uh, to reveal themselves, right? to do whatever it is uh, you want the type on text to do. The other is the overlap. Uh, set to 100, each text element will go individually. So it'll wait. So this one will, the Y waits for the P and the T waits for the Y. Uh, each one is waiting for the next one. If I say they can overlap, uh, by increasing the overlap, you'll notice that many more will start, kind of like a cascade effect, right? And so you might want to have them uh, not wait for each other, but rather um, all come on the screen rather quickly. And so that's what the the overlap does. So between reveal time and overlap, you can control how fast they're going to be revealed onto the screen. Okay, let's double click master scale, get that back. Then you've got um, scale X and Y. So you can make them thinner or fatter. I'll make them thinner in this uh, dimension. And then you can see that they actually get wider on the screen. If I was to do the same thing with, with scale Y, they would start very thin uh, and then they would bounce up and get bigger. Uh, okay, then you can also do the same thing with rotate. So here, rotate on the X is going to rotate uh, down on the X axis. So let's do a uh, minus 90 to lie it on its back. Uh, and then when we play it, you'll notice each one rotates up right to the current position. You could do the same thing with rotate Y. Make that a minus 90. Now they're all facing sideways. Uh, and then they reveal themselves as they turn to the front. And the same thing is going to happen with the Z, uh, which kind of spins them on their sides. So we'll do a minus 90 there. They'll all be lying on their sides. Uh, and then you can spin them up. And of course, you can use any combination of these. So uh, we can take it, uh, rotate Y. We can do uh, maybe a 360 on the Y and a rotate on the Z. And then you'll notice that they will spin, right? on the Y and on the Z as they come up. 
Now, the next parameter is very interesting. This is always visible parameter. Um, what always visible does is it puts them in their final position initially. So when I click this, you notice they're all in that final position that you want them in. And then as you play it, they will go from the final position and spin around or do whatever you wanted them to do. So that's an interesting effect where you can get them to be on the screen and then go off and kind of ripple through and do something uh, and then uh, wind up in the same position that they started in. Uh, the other you can do is play with the reveal order, whether it's going to do uh, forward or reverse. So let me, let me, let me uh, go here and change just one of these. So now that it's going to spin. Um, so here is forward, right? Each one in turn goes forward. Uh, we can decide to do them in reverse, and so they will start at the back and ripple to the left. Uh, and then you can do them random, and if you do select random, you want to give it a random seed, uh, so, you, so they don't want to start at the same place, it could be anything, uh, and then they just kind of randomly do whatever it is they do. Right? And this can be seen a little bit better with uh, the position, so let's, let's play with the position for a second. Uh, this position X here, um, let's bring this back to forward and see how this looks. Let's go to the position X, and I want to just take them off to one side and then we'll play them and you'll see all right they're all going to scoot over from that x position it's a little more interesting on the y which is uh, what i used at the beginning so i took position y and moved them up on the screen i'm not going to move them off if you can see what's happening uh, and then each one will drop down into position and now we'll use the random so you can see the random a little bit better now they will drop randomly and of course, you can use this as I did in the position with, uh, with rotate. So we can do a uh, 360 here, and then they will spin down to each one spinning. Let me do it forward so your eye can follow. This way you know the T is going to go first. Um, and so each one kind of spins down into place. And, and, and so the, uh, and the Z will do the same as it rotates around the Z. We can move them back in space on the Z. Uh, or we can move them forward in space on the Z, and then they will do the same thing. They will come up on the Z, right, and move into space. Now, those are all the parameters. The type off remove is the same set of parameters. So let's uh, let's just enable that, and we'll see there. You know, all the same. Remove time, overlap, fade, scaling, all of that. So then you can decide. I'll position the cursor in the middle here. Um, we have the effect on. And maybe I want them to drop straight down off the screen as the type off. And what I would do is go to position Y, uh, and I would make the position Y lower. And then we will play it. And you'll see that they will stay on the screen, and then they'll all drop off the screen one at a time on the position Y. And so using the type on and the type off, you can control how this text uh, comes on the screen uh, and exits the screen. A lot of interesting things that you can do with this. So that wraps it up. Hopefully you now understand type on text a little bit better. If you need more information, drop by BorisFX.com. This is John Refrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.